Alrighty, so let's talk about universities and how many of them to build. Um, so usually we will want to work up to 200 universities, and optimally we want to have them in our barrack state. So my barrack state here is Japan, so I have them in Chubu and Kansai. It's not, um, it's not perfect right now, so I, you, optimally you want to spread them out through your barrack state. Yes, you lose a bit of throughput, but you gain you gain a bit more officer qualification, which is gonna be crucial if you're fighting a lot of wars. Um, so, uh, what does 200 universities will would do for us? Uh, so, 200 universities will let you catch up to the great powers in terms of tech within 30 years, even if you don't start as a nation who has like zero tech, like what well, one tech in each area. So that's what 200 universities will do for you. And even if you're not super technologically behind, it's still going to be a good idea to work up to 200 universities so you can dedicate your innovation into one particular area and the AI will, due to their nature, research the other areas so that you can create a technology gap between you and the AI. So if you dedicate all your research into military per se, um, the AI will start researching um, production and society and then you just get the, those you just get those texts through tech spread which is going to be uh, so that means you will be creating a gap in military tech so that's good so let's do some analysis then um, of why do we want to build 200 universities so mechanics first every point of unspent innovation uh, every every point of unspent innovation gets oh well this is not exactly you know, let's do this way. Here we go. Every point of unspent innovation gets turned into 0.2 tech spread. What does that mean? Essentially, one point of unspent innovation gets turned into 0.6, you know, you know, 0 0.6 innovation, and you just it's like 60% efficient if it's unspent. And this is kind of why we always want to keep a tech researching, right? Also, tech spread only will spread to techs that other people have already researched. So if you start with the most advanced tech, you will not get any tech spread, as we can see here. Like, uh, in military, I have the most advanced tech. Like, I have airplanes and stuff, right? So that... Uh, I do. I, I am not getting any tech spread in military. Like no other nation have more advanced military tech than me. So I'm not getting any military tech tech spread. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. And also we can see the unspent innovation tur getting turned into tech spread here. Uh, plus one hundred thirty-one point three five. Right. So also like innovation above cap is counts as unspent innovation. So how am I getting this 131.535? It's because I have like what? I have 811 total innovation. So I have a ton of innovation above cap. So that's giving me a ton of tech spread. So, build, so this is why building up university is crucial for technologically behind nations to catch up to the five GPs who starts with the max cell tech. So Brits, Frenchies, Prussians, and Americans, and Belgianese for the Ferris Railroad, if I recall correctly. Um, so let's take a look at how much tech point are we behind. So if we start as a nation with z absolutely zero tech, like no tech at all, um, like we, if we are talk, we are talking about stuff like Akoli, like the Great Lake nations, and like the African nations. I don't. I think Africa, like I think East Africa, even have some tech. Like uh, I'm sure. Like the one thing I'm sure is that like the Great Lake nations all start with like zero tech. Like they they have one tech in each area. So essentially zero tech. Um. So how much are we behind? So for a nation with zero tech. We are behind the great powers by 65k in production, 62.5k in military, and 11, 115k in society. And now, so we know how much we are behind by, we will also need to know how fast are the great powers researching so that we know, like, when can we catch, catch up to them, right? So the great powers are researching while they, how fast are they researching? While they have a base of 50 Inno cap and 50 Inno, as we can see here in the files. Uh, like you can also see this in game as well, but I'm just using the files. It's more specific, 50 Inno cap, 50 Inno, and 
25 tax spread. And we also know that 1% literacy gives us 1.5 ENO cap and 0.75 tax spread. So it's ENO cap, not actual ENO. And we also know that the AI in the defines, they are set to build up to 75% of their ENO cap. So like, essentially they want to they want to build enough universe. They want to build enough universities to go up to seventy-five percent of their total inno cap. So let's take the Brits for example. Here, Brits has the highest starting literacy at sixty percent. Um, so they will have an inno cap of like one forty point five. Like the it, the math is a bit off because like it's, there's a demo here. Like I'm just saying sixty literacy here so 140 it's really close essentially it's the same um so that means they will actually want to go up to 105 in actual innovation right now the ai is not doing that because it's dedicating itself to the ports economy that's an ai issue not so we're just gonna assume that the ai is functioning according to the files also they will have 60 times like 70 tax spread like if we switch to brits here we will see that their average tax spread in the beginning is around 70 just from the base tax spread and literacy so 42 plus 127 divided by 2 that's like 70 ish it's a bit off again because we have because the brits it's they have a bit of unspent innovation so as long as soon as we like see it now becomes like one like 35 and 105 which adds it up 140 divided by 270 that's our number however for the tech gps we need to notice that like what we need to know is that tech gps do not get tech spread in the beginning as i said technology only spread if another nation have researched it before you have right so the five tech gps will not have their tech spread functioning like most of the like all of the time they will have it functioning most of the time of course but not just not all of the time so essentially we will multiply their effective tax spread by 0 0.8 so functioning like we're just we're gonna assume it's functioning like 80 percent of the time so they have an effective tax spread of 56. so assuming that the ai will allocate their innovation evenly uh, which they kind of do in the sense that they will finish up the tiers so uh, they will finish up all the tier 2 tax in all three areas before me moving on to tier 3 tax. So they do in some sense spread out their innovation evenly. Um, however, it's not exactly accurate. It's just an assumption that we are making here. So we can from that calculate the Brits inno growth in any tech area to be 56 plus 105 divided by 3 equals to 91. So this is how fast the great powers are going to be researching. Um, the other great powers are gonna research a lot slower because they have a lower literacy, hence a lower, um, <coughs> hence they will have a lower default cap tax spread, um, like lower base tax spread. However, they will, uh, so it's not that off. Also, we are going by the worst case scenario here. So using the Brits is kind of end of good for that. Also, how fast are we researching? So we also have, same as the Brits, 55 ENO and CAP, and assuming that we have like 30% literacy through the entire process. Um, also, this is a worst case scenario SMA. Like as long as you have like two levels of institution in education, your literacy will go up above 50. Like it's not that hard to get your literacy above 30. So, Worst case scenario estimate, just taking a really safe number here. So at base, we will have 95 innovation cap, 90 in 90 actual innovation, and 25 plus 30 times 0 0.75 equals to 42.5 tax spread. Also, let's assume that we will be concentrating all our research into military and production tech. These why are we doing this? Again, we're doing this by a worst case scenario. What we want to do is that if we are, what we want to do is see if we are only catching up to the Brits in society with only default, with only tax spread, how many universities does it take us? So, uh, that means we are not going to put any actual innovation points into, um, society. We're just going to use tax spread to increase it. So that means we, 
will have to first increase our society tax spread to 91 to stay in pace with the Brits. And then we also need the surplus of, uh, tax spread to deal with the 115k difference in the existing society tax. Say we want to be completely cut off to the Brits within 30 years, so let's do the math from there. Uh, to keep pace of the, with the Brits, we need 91 minus 42.5 divided by 0 0.2, which is like the 0 0.2 from the tax spread ratio um, from here. Yeah, from here. Uh, that will give us 242 excess innovation required. So we need 242 extra innovation. And to make up for the 115K innovation difference in 30 years, which is 1,560 weeks, we will need 368 excess innovation. And adding on the 50, 45 innovation we need to max out our InnoCap of 95, that will give us a total innovation required, weekly innovation required of 656. And using the philosophy department, which is a second tier tech in society, uh, dialects, uh, we will need a total number of 219 levels of universities. And under 20% throughput, that means we will need a total of 183 universities. And hence our conclusion, 200 universities lets us catch up to the great powers within 30 years. Um, this is a super worst case scenario. Like if you have 200 universities and if you have like a decent literacy rate, the time will you only be spending like 15 years, 10 years ish. And if you start with any nation that has like a bit more tax than say like Akoli and the Great Lake nations, um, you will. Also, I'm curious how much tech does the West West African nations have? You will just you will tech up a lot faster. Like this 30 year is a really worst case scenario. Like the slow, uh, the slowest of the slow. Oh, the West African nations are not that far off from the Great Lake ones. Uh, however, they are a bit more advanced, of course. Um, so, um, however, we do have to note that, like, since each university costs like around 1.5k, I did a math here. Oh, by the way, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's in Chinese. Essentially, I added up the wage and the uh, uh, material cost, which the wage is like counts for like two thirds of your actual uh the wage counts for like around two thirds of your uh total of your university's cost hence if we build up the throughput the uh, the actual cost of per, the cost per innovation will start going down so that's why we kind of want a bit of throughput yes you can yes you can distribute your universities and just not care about throughput at all that will help with your qualifications in general but uh personally i just want like to build them in my barrack state so uh, and s since i use japan mostly with, as a barrack state um that will give us around what like japan has like 10 states or something so that's kind of perfect 200, univers 200 universities in 10 states, 20% throughput even. All right, so uh, lastly, we do have to note that universities can be decently expensive. Like it costs 1.5K per week and getting 200 universities hence will cost you 300K. Um, not really cheap. It will like that. If you translate that into construction power, you will get what? Uh, 300, you will, you will get, that's like 400 construction power. Um, that you are trading off for 200 universities. Um, so not really cheap. Personally, I will just say keep the number of universities at around half our construction center. So for every two construction centers, we build like one university. Um, that's kind of a decent ratio. You like, it's mostly preference, of course. Uh, it's a trade off between if I want to spend more money uh, if I want to catch up in tech a bit quicker, or if I want to industrialize faster. So it's just a choice, personal choice. Um, here I have, what, 268 construction sectors, and what, hmm, how many units, and 181 universities. So yeah, um, I kind of stick to this ratio, I don't know about you. Um, th there can be a bit of math involved in this, like I, I can't do the math, like the my GDP video uh, to calculate that kind of stuff, but the the gain you get get from tech it's kind of eh, it's iffy. 
it, it's really hard to calculate, so I don't think I'm doing that. <laughs> also, um, so yeah, lastly, just as I know, so just so we, just to repeat the conclusion that I mentioned again, uh, putting them in barrack states will help with your officer qualifications. So essentially, if we take a look here, I have a lot of officers. Um, Essentially, all my po half of my population in this place can become officers, since like the total pop is like the total workforce I have here is like 1.46 million, right? So essentially, like around half of my pops can be officers. So with a good number of universities, you will be able to make sh you will in be able to ensure that your barracks are have enough manpower to beat on whoever's fighting you. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I like and subscribe, please. Um, oh god, I'm not good at saying that. Uh, my pronunciation is probably still a bit crooked, um, so excuse me for that. Um, anyhow, um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to post them in the comment section. I will reply to them to the best of my abilities. And yeah, bye-bye.